Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome back to the Social Regressive and back to the Savage 12 FV Project Rifle where we are going to begin on ammo. We're going to ammo now instead of doing the pillar bedding and epoxy bedding on here because we had, uh, we've had a bunch of questions in the past. Does pillar bedding and epoxy bedding make a difference? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tune up the ammo first. We'll come up with a good load and then we'll see if after pillar bedding and epoxy bedding whether those groups uh, shrink even further. Further. I'm expecting good performance with just the stock as is, but uh, I do expect that when we put in some of that hardware, we may see some of the groups shrink up, and uh, I think mostly overall we'll just see a bit more consistent performance all the way around. Uh, but yeah, we are going to test it, and the ammo that we are loading up is... Okay, this is 6.5 Creedmoor, so we're working with FC Brass, and today in this video, we're just doing brass prep. We're gonna get this ready. I have some new kind of tips and tricks that I've been using lately to get things done a little bit faster. It's more precise, I think, than some of the things that I've done in the past, but it's also a good bit faster. And I'm gonna show you some of the equipment that I've been using here in the background. The, uh, the ammo that we're going to load up, these are 147 grain Hornady ELDM bullets. These are, as you can see, quite long. They are, it's, it's quite a big 6.5 bullet. And these are gonna get us a very high ballistic coefficient. Yeah, they're gonna move a little bit slower out of the muzzle than uh, the 140s, but these are going to be uh, much quicker through the air overall. They're going to arrive on target at that really long range uh, quite a bit sooner and probably stay supersonic quite a bit longer. Uh, so yeah, this is a little bit of a different recipe, but we are continuing to use, well, CCI BR2 primers and Reloader 16. That's gonna be our total recipe. We'll get into that in the next video, but for now, let's just get to brass. Let me show you what we're dealing with. This is once fired brass. I think this particular one went through the Model 10 GRS from Savage. Great rifle. If you wanna go check out those videos, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, this was a, a very comfortable rifle, but no matter what rifle that we shoot this through, if it came from a, a different chamber, then you really do have to full length size for the first time. We're not just gonna do a neck size on this and pop it in. That's a recipe for getting things stuck in the, uh, the chamber. So we are going to full length size this. And before we do that, I should point out that not all of this ammo is as pretty as it should be. Uh, this right here came from the CMMG Mark III DTR2, which is now the Endeavor. Uh, it's the same brass, and it was probably firing the same projectile, but as you can see, a semi-auto is going to uh, kind of dirty up your brass a bit more, and I think this one is extra dirty because it rattled around in my trunk. Uh, so yeah, these both need to be cleaned first. As you can see, I'm old school running a tumbler instead of one of the cool kids' ultrasonic cleaners. I might get into one of those someday, but this really does work great, although I did make one change. Uh, I have been using corncob media for a long time and I've been pretty disappointed with the results. So I have switched over to walnut and have been very, very happy, especially with a couple tablespoons of Hornady one-shot uh, metal polish inside there. This works great. The results are much better, much cleaner, and it just, you know, it looks better. And the neat thing about the, uh, the really fine walnut is that it doesn't stick inside the flash hole. It just falls out. Here is my polished brass. Well, kind of polished. I didn't let it go for a very long time. We're gonna come back at this, I think, afterward. Uh, we're gonna do a second clean on this after we have done the full uh, case size. And here's what we're gonna be using. This is Hornady One Shot Case Lube. And this stuff is awesome. It takes so much time off of my usual job. Uh, as you've seen before in some of the other videos that I produced a long while back, I was using uh, some of the uh, like the, the case lube pad and some of the liquid on there and you know some kind of little brush to get inside the neck. Well, this does it all in one go. You can see that, yeah, all right, you are paying for it. It's about 20 bucks for one of these cans. And I, I really don't know how long this is gonna last but I think it's well worth it. This just takes so much time off the process. They call this Hornady one shot, but it's really two shot. You have to hit this from two sides as long as you get the correct angle. And you have to make sure that you shoot downward at about a 45 degree because you not only want to get the outside of the case, you do have to get the inside of that case neck as well. So here we go. For the resizing phase, we're using the RCBS Rock Chucker Supreme, the giant magnum 
overbuilt press that we talked about in a previous video. I'll link to it over here. And then for the dies, we are using RCBS. Uh, this is their two die set. And then when it comes time to do neck sizing instead, I did pick up one of these Lee Collet neck sizers. They're brilliant. Make sure that you buy one if you have any bottleneck cartridges. And if you can read what's going on back there, then you can get a, a clue of what might be coming up in the near future. Trim to 1.920 inches per the specs. This book that I'm working from is the Spear Reloading Manual, the newest one. So this has all of their hottest new powders like Reloader 16, uh, which is what we're gonna be basing our load on. And then we are trimming with the RCBS Trim Pro 2. They do make a model that you can hook up to a drill so you can get power, but uh, really the handheld here does everything that I need. Now for all the fiddly little things that we have to do to this brass to get it fully ready. We have a dirty primer pocket, which may not be uniform, and we have cut the case mouth here on the trimmer, so we have kind of a ring of metal going around. We need to chamfer and deburr this. And thankfully, I don't have to use all those horrible little hand tools anymore. It's not like that there was really any problem with them, but if you're doing bulk brass, uh, it's, it's very slow, very tedious, and it's nice to have something like this that can do pretty much all of the work all in one shot. So let me show you some of the tools that are on here. This is called the RCBS Brass Boss, and this has six spinning stations, and you can choose the speed that everything spins at. And you can see that some of these do spin a little bit faster than others. Uh, this little cutter wheel, for example, is uh, going quite fast back here. And yeah, all of these actually come in the box. So right here, this has all kinds of power adapters. If you're in Europe or wherever, uh, you can get all kinds of adapters to fit the, uh, the power supply that comes in here. And then it does come with all these little cutters and a bunch of brushes as well if you want to uh, do your, your case, neck, and mouth uh, lubrication using those. But of course, the first things I'm gonna do, I'm going to deburr this. I'll probably need to take the speed up a little bit, screaming at me. But yeah, that just cut that right off. Got a little bit of brass hanging on right there. Let's go ahead and crank this up just a tad. So yeah, I got the outside cutter to get rid of any excess metal. Let's chamfer the inside. That'll help the bullet to seat a lot nicer. And then we have some other primer pocket tools right here. Back here, this is actually a cutter for cutting out the military primer that you may have in some of your brass, which is a huge help for me. I use a lot of Lake City brass for 223 and for 308 and even converting down to 7 millimeter 08. And uh, yeah, uh, some of the other tools that are out there are just horrible. Uh, some of them break pretty easily, but this one is really nice. You just drop it on there and it cuts it out. Uh, this is commercial brass, this is FC, so we don't need anything like that, but we do have a primer pocket uniforming tool. So that right there is going to cut out any excess uh, metal that might be in there and give you the correct depth. And then this is a cleaner that's going to remove any carbon buildup inside there. And oh, look how that shines. Beautiful. This brass is now ready to go back into the tumbler for a final clean and then we can load it up. Those were a whole lot of steps, but now we should have some good consistent brass that we can use when we load up in the next uh, video. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you can see when the new videos come out. And check us out on, face on Facebook as well. We have The Social Regressive on Facebook, and on there I announce when new videos come out, and a lot of time I actually do kind of a sneak peek. It could be a few hours, it could be 24 hours, uh, before everybody else gets to see the videos, you can actually watch them uh, through Facebook. And I provide some kind of extra content on there as well. You might enjoy that. But I really do want to make sure you don't miss the next video because we're heading in a different direction with these loads than I have in the past. I've done ladder loads, I've done optimal charge weight, and I've gotten excellent results with both of those, but usually there's something just a little bit missing. I'll get a tight group, but the velocities are kind of weird, and so at some of the longer distances, you're starting to get vertical stringing. 
Um, and you know, maybe with the other, maybe I get good velocities, but the groups open up. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to align those, those kind of two lines. If we can find an intersection point between excellent consistent velocities and excellent consistent group sizes, then I, we're gonna be cooking. So we're going to use a method that Eagle Eye uh, I'll put his, a link to his channel here in the sidebar and down in the description below because you really need to go check him out. Uh, he's been using kind of a modified Satterley method, which is typically designed to find the best velocities, and it doesn't really care about groups. Well, he's been using kind of a hybrid method to find not only uh, good velocities, but good group sizes as well and find out where those intersect. So we're going to be playing with that in the next video and I think it should work out really well. We'll find out. A big thank you to everybody that has made these videos possible. Thank you to the manufacturers that have provided some of the parts that you see on here. Thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts out on Patreon that have actually purchased the rifle and some of the consumables and other things that you see here on the bench. Uh, you guys are making it happen. Thank you to Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum levels and to Peter at the 300 Win Mag level. Uh, and thanks a bunch to just everybody that has chipped in a buck or two a month to help keep these videos coming. I really do appreciate it. I also do have postcards for a bunch of you guys that I'm behind on. They're actually sitting on my desk right now. I just have to uh, get the addresses on them and mail them out. It's just one of the other things that uh, kind of fell behind when I was dealing with some of these other things in the background. But yeah, those are coming. And if anybody else wants to become a patron of the Destructive Arts, I'll put a link in the sidebar and in the description down below. Uh, just for a buck or two a month, you can help to keep videos like this coming. I have some crazy ideas for some, uh, some projects in the future, and we'll see if we can make those happen. Uh, I will see you all around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.